and Vorig nearby. One of the older men from whom Eddie Hutchinson learned his craft boasted that practically every piece of wood in a Navog is either curved or a slant. Strange to say, the Navog was introduced to the Dingle Peninsula from County Clare only at the middle of the last century and never reached South Kerry. The four lengths of white deal for the bow gunnels are steamed and placed around a mould to give them the necessary curve. Their brown colour was produced by the tannin from the oak ribs, also in the steamer. The bow ribs, which need to be sharply bent, are tied around a number of metal moulds. The Navog had its heyday during the two world wars. In 1942, there were 60 Navogs fishing out of the Kuas, and a night's catch might total 4,000 mackerel, and there was a ready market for them. Young Tom Hutchinson may yet be a champion oarsman like his father. At least he'll be able to build himself a Navog. The lower gunnel is laid down first. The thwarts, called tochti in this Irish-speaking area, with a knee of aroko attached, are screwed onto it. This word tochte, like many other boating terms, was borrowed from the Vikings who settled in Ireland. This particular Navog is a small two-seater. The stanchions are positioned at regular intervals and hold the upper and lower gunnels together. For a number of years now, even the longer Navog has a narrower beam and lower gunnel than formerly, in order to make it more suitable for racing in local regattas. Jack Shea from next door is here to help in putting the Fonsi into position. Oh my God, In the absence of a keel, the double gunnel keeps the whole structure in shape. This may explain the inverted construction which is peculiar to Irish curraghs. 
The Kerry Navogue is distinguished mainly by the way in which the laths shear upwards and converge at the stern. Eddie's wife, Hannah, makes her contribution by painting on the Kerry colors instead of the customary green and red lead. The canvas is loosely tacked in position to get the shape right. Mary, a helpful neighbour, sews it together. When in position, the canvas gets two coats of boiling tar. To carry out repairs, one simply fires the damaged surface so that the tar softens. A strip of canvas, or the tail of one's shirt in an emergency, is then stuck on. A simple case of burning one's bolts. Noel Cummins, himself a Navogue builder from Castle Gregory, pays an unexpected visit. Talking of butter, St. Brendan is reported to have taken a quantity along with him to dress the hides he might need for repairs to his curragh.